doctor. So he um, agrees that I've exhausted all conservative. The doctor today was the most gentle OBGYN I've ever seen. It was an older male. He did the Q-tip test. First time a doctor has ever done that for me. He did my um, pap smear and then he also did a yeast culture, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But he was so kind and he asked me throughout the whole procedure if I was okay and if I was experiencing pain. And that was the first, like, guy in exam I think I've gotten that wasn't painful at all. <sighs> Other than when he was trying to provoke the pain with the Q-tip test. And I'm just so grateful that there are providers out there who consider the severity of someone's complaints and take that into consideration by proceeding gently when they're doing exams on, on people. So in the end, he did uh, agree with my self-diagnosis of what was so he um, agrees that I've exhausted all conservative measures for treating my pain and that we should move on to the second line of um, pain management strategies and then if those don't work consider the third which is the more significant one so the second line of, of interventions would be things like okay. Botox injections uh, systemic medicines like gabapentin, which I don't want to do, and he doesn't think we'll go that route. And a different type of trigger point injection received way more frequently than what I was getting done um, to like really desensitize the tissues. Then, if those don't work, the final treatment, well, not the final, I guess. The next treatment would be a surgical intervention called a vestibulectomy. During that surgery, they actually take the vestibule tissue off of your body, completely remove it, and then they take your vaginal tissue and retract it outside of your body to create that vestibule. It's pretty fascinating. Um, he's His success rate is close to 80%, which is pretty good. Um, if I ever did go that way, I'd do a lot more research and pick a surgeon accordingly. But after that, he said his patients who even fail doing that, he does PRP injections and stem cells. Back, back to the yeast infection or yeast thing. So he asked if I've had like chronic yeast infections or chronic UTIs, and I have not. I've never had one, either one. And he said something interesting, that sometimes this condition can be because of a chronic yeast infection that has zero symptoms at all. And it's just this, like, I don't know, I, I, I asked him, I was like, people who've had this as long as I have and as severe as I have have resolved. And he's like, yeah, it takes a long time to treat the yeast um, and to figure out what's causing it. But... That could be the easiest solution. I don't think that's the answer. My gut's telling me no. I wish. But I'll keep you guys updated. I'm happy to answer questions. I'll throw up a box. I don't want to take up too much of my space here with all this stuff. It's very different than prolapse. So I haven't decided on what... I have not decided on what my idea of what's next is going to be, plan of care-wise. Um... Most likely I'm going to hold off until we have another child and then decide because it did get better after I had my son. Um, so I'm holding out hope that it'll get better again. But I just really like to know that there's finally someone on my team who is kind and understanding and actually listened to me and knows what I'm going through and has seen it many, many times before. Here's the box if you have questions.